Okay, we're good. And you can start and I will shut off my own volume here. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Terry. And uh, my son Roman used to go to the school where you guys are. And we actually know Miss Vicki and Miss Janet and lots of other of the teachers there. So uh, we know you guys are in really good hands there and they make it a lot of fun. I'm going to read today a book called Nuts Anyone. And it's a book about the secret life of squirrels. Um, it was written by Nick, Nick DeMauro. And it's the story of Bumpy, Pushy, Scooter, Scout, Scrapper, and Daryl. So everyone knows that squirrels can't talk, right? Well, so did I until Scrapper let me in on a secret. They can send us mental messages and in turn, they can receive ours. I was awestruck and agreed not to tell anyone about the squirrel's ability until I wrote this book. The guys gave me permission and called it Poetic License so I could tell this story. I hope you enjoy it, but please don't tell anyone it's a secret. What happened to the peanut butter? I didn't have much time for animals while I was busy trying to earn a living to provide for my wife Patricia and our four children, but that was about to change. It was a beautiful sunny and warm day in June and we just got done eating outdoors on our patio. We had dessert, vanilla ice cream with hot fudge sauce and melted peanut butter. Everyone helped clear the table, taking the dishes and silverware into the house for washing. The table was completely cleared except for a jar of peanut butter. When our work was done in the kitchen, I noticed that the peanut butter was still outdoors. And when I went to get it, I saw that the top was removed, the jar was lying on its side, and a squirrel was dipping his paw and pulling out peanut butter and munching on it. He didn't care that I was standing there watching from about three feet away. He just glanced at me and went right back to eating. I was so amused watching him and when he jumped off the table and ran away, I was a little sad. I never knew that little critters were so cute and smart. Now that the little guy claimed the peanut butter for himself, I brought it into the kitchen and labeled it for the squirrel. The next morning he returned to our patio and since there was no peanut butter, he came to our patio door and pressed his nose to the glass and caught my attention. I decided to make a friend of the little guy. So I got a cracker and spread peanut butter on it, opened the door and got down on my knee to hand it to him. He backed away, took a few steps forward and backed away again. This went on for a few minutes and finally he very slowly crept toward me. I held up my hand with the cracker and he cautiously and gently took it into his mouth and ran away. I communicated with a little animal and it felt really good. Over the following days, the squirrel would come to our door and I would kneel down and hand him a cracker with his beloved peanut butter. As the days went by, he did not back away from me and he took the cracker from my hand with his paws. Now I knew that we were friends. Each day the squirrel would come to our door at 7 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. for his peanut butter snack. I actually looked forward to his coming and enjoyed our little get together. I was amazed when he placed one paw on my hand while he ate with the other. I felt that was his way of saying thank you. One day the squirrel didn't come by for his treat and I was a little concerned, but I just thought that he needed a break. Several days went by and still he had not come. Now I was worried. Something bad may have happened to him. A few days later, he appeared at our door. When I knelt down to give him the snack, I noticed that he had a very large bump over his right eye, forcing his eyelid closed. I couldn't believe the size of it and I thought that it was a tumor growing on his head. I gave him his treat and left to call our vet to ask him if he would see the squirrel. He told me to get a sort of trap and put his peanut butter snack inside. It worked and I was able to catch the squirrel in order to give him medical attention. I called the vet to arrange for a time to bring the squirrel but the office was closed. Meanwhile, the poor squirrel started to cry and pace around the cage frantically. I felt sorry for him and couldn't keep him I couldn't keep him caged until the vet was available. So I let him out and he ran away from me. 
I wanted to get him medical help, but there was no way that he would be caged again. I worried about him and I decided to pray, asking God to heal him. I told God that the squirrel was his creature too and needed his help. The next day, Bumpy, the name I gave him, came for his snack. To my amazement, the swelling was nearly gone and his eye was open. I thanked God for his healing. And here's a picture of Bumpy. One day I was busy at the computer and failed to notice the time for Bumpy's snack. My back was turned to the door. I heard a small squeal and when I turned, Bumpy was sitting behind me. I was stunned. How did he get into the house and how did he know where I was? What an intelligent little guy. I got up to go into the kitchen with Bumpy leading the way. He sat in a plant pot near the door while I prepared his food. When I was done, Bumpy led me to the back door and went outside to be fed. I noticed a tear in the door screen and that was how he got in. I couldn't get over how smart this little guy was and my respect for animals grew. The next day, Bumpy came to the door with five of his friends and they sat politely while I prepared snacks for all of them. I made sure to have plenty of peanut butter on hand. His friends watched carefully as Bumpy came to me and took the food from my hand. Then one by one, they approached me and slowly backed away, then came closer, very slowly, while I handed them the snack. Now the whole gang was eating out of my hand. I decided that I would have to name them too. I observed them every day and saw little personality traits that described each of them. Scout was the first guy on the scene to alert me that the gang was about to show up for their treats. And there's Scout. Scooter would zip around notifying the gang that it was snack time. Bushy would climb up the screen and shake it to get my attention whenever the guys were ready for another helping. There's Pushy. Scrapper would chase the Blue Jays away whenever they would show up for some goodies. The last squirrel to come for his snack was very timid and seemed to be staying back after his first helping, observing the other guys and making mental notes. I called him Daryl. After a few days, a little chipmunk came to the door after the squirrels left, asking for peanuts, I assumed. I always kept a large can of nuts on hand in case the peanut butter ran out. They were dry roasted peanut halves that were easy for the guys to handle. I threw out a handful and Chip zigged around as though he was on wheels. In a flash, he crammed 17 half nuts in his cheeks and zipped away. Patricia, my wife, named him Hoover because he seemed to vacuum up the nuts. There's Hoover. Days turned into weeks and then months, but the squirrels maintained their feeding time as though they had watches. I couldn't get over their time on time arrivals. How did they do that? One morning, Bumpy came to our door with two little baby squirrels, and it was then that I realized that Bumpy was a female. I assumed that these baby squirrels were her children. I offered them a small snack, and they timidly approached me after looking to their mother for approval. It finally dawned on me that Bumpy was introducing me to her children because she was not going to be back. I was worried that she was dying, and she wanted her children to be aware that we would help them. She seemed to know what I was thinking and she told me that she was not coming back and thanked me for taking good care of her and for all the delicious nuts. I couldn't believe my mind. Bumpy actually spoke, spoke to me mentally. How could this be? She told me that squirrels always talk among themselves, but they also plant ideas in people's minds like, get the nuts, please. She asked me to take care of her children and sadly she left. Bumpy never returned again after that day. I was really sad that I lost a beautiful friend who started the peanut butter parade. The other guys returned every day on schedule and some days they brought Bumpy's children. I realized that they were acting like a family looking after the little ones. I marveled at their intelligence and sense of responsibility and assumed that the adult squirrels took care of each other's children. What a beautiful thing to do. Now I know that this is going to sound a little crazy, but I felt that we were able to read each other's thoughts. Then I remembered that Bumpy told me that squirrels could put thoughts into our minds. I became aware that the guy wanted me to change the snacks. The peanut butter was great, 
but they were getting tired of it. So for breakfast, I gave them pieces of croissant that they really liked. And on other days, I would give them olive oil toast. They were very happy with the toast. And I could swear that they were taking bets that I would serve them pizza next. Sometimes they asked for pancakes, lightly buttered, without syrup. They were not fans of sugar. I noticed that Hoover was coming around more frequently after the squirrels were gone. He was looking for any leftovers and I would throw out a handful of peanuts that he quickly stuffed into his cheeks, no less than 10 at a time, and he would scoot off to his nest. Why was he taking so many nuts at a time? How could he empty his cheeks so quickly and return within minutes? Then one day we noticed that he came out from underneath a large plant followed by two other chipmunks. We now realize that there were three Hoovers and between them, they must have a large amount of nuts stashed away. In October around Halloween, the chipmunks packed up their nuts and left our yard. They went somewhere for the winter, but they returned every spring when their large plant was nearly fully grown. I noticed that Daryl was the last to arrive and the first to leave. Scooter must have heard me thinking aloud and he sent me a mental message telling me that Daryl had to leave early for his violin lesson. Scooter was always joking and I laughed at the idea of a little squirrel playing a violin. A piano would be much easier to handle. We have the best cat in the world named Tino. He is a warm, friendly, cuddly guy who has us well trained to care for his every need. Tino became interested in watching the squirrels and soon came to accept them as a part of our family. And here's Tino. Every morning, Tino would go to the patio door and wait for the arrival of Scout. When he appeared, Tino would let me know that the guys had arrived for their meal. The squirrels became very used to Tino watching from inside the glass door. And at times they would push their noses against the glass face to face with him and they would stare at each other for a while before attacking their meal. It was interesting to watch a friendship grow. The guys came to know that there would be plenty of food for them, and they told Scrapper to ease up on the Jays and allow them a nut or two. They didn't mind Hoover coming around from time to time and seemed to enjoy the little game of seeing who could gobble up the most nuts. Hoover, of course, was the winner. Before a squirrel could eat one nut, Hoover vacuumed up about 10 and zipped away. Pushy didn't enjoy climbing up and down the screen several times to ask for more nuts. He was not happy about Hoover's visits and would plead with Scrapper to chase Hoover, Hoover away. Scrapper took it to a vote and everyone except Pushy wanted Hoover to return. Pushy protested and decided to climb into the flower pot that was outside our kitchen window where he could stare at me instead of wasting energy climbing the screen. This worked out well for everyone. Several days had passed without a visit from any of the squirrels and when they finally returned, Daryl told me that they had memorial services for Bumpy that lasted for three days due to the number of attendees and out of yard guests who had to be accommodated. There were many squirrels to be fed and not enough nuts to go around. The guys didn't want to impose on me, so they sent a crew to check out the food store's garbage bins for delicacies. Everyone left content but sad about losing Bumpy. The very next day, Scrapper appeared at my door wearing a cowboy hat and a red bandana around his neck. He came to say goodbye. I asked him where he was going and he told me that he always wanted to travel out west and since he wasn't getting any younger, he thought that he should not delay any longer. Here's the cowboy scrapper. I asked him if he would give me the name of the town. He, he mentioned St. James, which is the village next to ours. It was only a mile away, but it was west of us. I asked him to write when he got settled and he laughed. You should know that squirrels can't write. Besides, he didn't know how long he would be on the road. I told him that it shouldn't take him more than 30 minutes to arrive. I asked him who would police the Jays, and he told me that he asked his cousin Puncher to see me for the job. Meanwhile, Pushy will handle the pesky woodpecker that started to come around. He put out his paw and we shook. He thanked me for taking good care of him, and as he turned to leave, I noticed a tiny guitar strapped to his back. I didn't dare ask. 
Cruncher joined the family the next day. He was much larger than the other squirrels and had well-developed muscles. He told me that he tried to work out twice a day, pumping acorns, then working his way up to walnuts. Here's Cruncher. I complimented him on his appearance and tossed him a couple of nuts. I noticed that he was very muscle bound, making him slower than the others. In addition, he was very clumsy. After a few days, I noticed that whenever it was meal time and the little guys would gather, Cruncher would race to the door, bowling everyone aside and slamming on the brakes just before bouncing off the door. He would always apologize though and turning away with his food, he would knock over several flower pots as he hurried away. The pesky woodpecker, woodpecker witnessed this and never returned. The guys liked having Cruncher around to protect them from that menacing rabbit that would show up now and then. They soon realized that the rabbit was timid and not at all scary. So he was allowed to eat his clover, but not the peanuts. Everything was great. The food was excellent and the menu varied from day to day. So the guys decided that they would not spread the word in order to keep this restaurant a secret. Besides the chef was getting old and had trouble kneeling down. No one knows how long he could keep up this pace. So the guys told the chef not to vary the menu as much. Every three days would be fine. And as long as the meals were varied from breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Then one day disaster struck. A nasty raccoon called Growler came on the scene. There's Growler. He saw the food that the squirrels were getting and he decided that he would be the only one to dine here. Cruncher was gone, so Growler chased all the little guys away and ate all the treats that were lying outside the door. I saw what was happening and I rescheduled meal times to discourage Growler. It worked for a little while until he got wise to our plan. I decided not to put out any more food in an attempt to get Growler to leave our yard. I saw the squirrels digging around the yard and in the flower pots, trying to remember where they buried the nuts for emergencies. Try as they might, they just couldn't remember where the nuts were. The situation was getting worse with each day because Growler decided to camp outside our door. Pushy called a meeting and everyone showed up to discuss the problem. Cruncher was away on vacation out west, visiting Scrapper who was building a great career singing in a country western bar in St. James. The guys decided to send for him to help get rid of Growler. Even though Cruncher was much smaller, he was really tough and they had faith that Growler would be history when Cruncher arrived from out west. How could they get word to Cruncher? No one had a cell phone. It was then that Daryl, who reads a lot, suggested that the guys ask Flutter, who was the nicest Blue Jay, to fly west to, to deliver the message. Well, it worked. Cruncher packed his nutcase and was ready to leave immediately. The trip with traffic would take about 30 minutes and he didn't waste time by going to the bar to say goodbye to Scrapper. He decided to leave him a note, but since he couldn't write, he left an empty walnut shell with an arrow pointing east. He knew that Scrapper would understand that he was going home. When Scrapper saw the shell, he knew that there must be an emergency because Cruncher ate his last walnut in order to get the shell to leave his message. That walnut was very dear to Cruncher since his mother gave it to him to remember her by. Cruncher arrived at our door about 45 minutes later. That darn mall traffic. Scooter saw him and assembled all the guys. After the greetings and hugs were over, Pushy told Cruncher the situation. Cruncher got very angry and his face turned red as he pumped up his muscles. He was a little out of shape from hanging out in that country western bar, drinking too many thimbles of root beer. Cruncher needed a little time to get into shape and after a few days, he arrived at our door for the big face off. All the guys gathered around to see the big fight. They were sure to keep a distance away to avoid getting hit by a flying raccoon when Cruncher tosses him. Growler walked with a swagger thinking that the squirrels would back away as he came to the door. Well, they did back up a little and when Growler arrived, Cruncher, who stood tall with his arms folded in defiance, met him at the door. Growler seemed to laugh, giving out a sound between a grunt and a snort. This annoyed Cruncher even more. He made a fist and stepped toward Growler. 
Pushy was worried that Cruncher would get hurt because Growler was so much bigger. He told the guys that this was their fight too and gave out a war cry to get everyone to help Cruncher. The squirrels began to circle Growler, who became worried that he could not fight everyone. So he walked away with his head bowed and his tail dragging on the ground. He never returned. Cruncher thanked the guys for their help. He apologized for not being able to toss Growler. Pushy patted him on the back and told him that he was their hero, who wasn't afraid to stand up to that nasty raccoon. The gang cheered and everyone hugged Cruncher. They learned a great lesson. If you and your friends stand together protecting each other, then no bully is going to mess with you. I thought that this occasion called for a celebration, so I gave everyone pizza and a thimble of grape juice. The guys went home full, happy, and a lot wiser. The end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. That was such a great book. I want to see the cover, if you don't mind, if you can just put your... Um... Sorry, now my dog decided to start barking. I think it's too funny for me. <laughs> I think, do you think he liked it? <laughs> I think so. She was sitting here quietly all this time listening. Let me just thank you. Thank get you. her to be quiet and then I'll be right back to you. <laughs> That was a definitely a different kind of a book than we've heard before. Most of our books have been more on the, um, you know, fairy tale kind of thing. That book was like, had so much details in there. So many, you know, different levels of, of um, things. It was pretty cool. Oh, good. <laughs> can you hold it up so I can get one screenshot of you with, hold the book up again? That's oh, sure. it. Perfect. Every time you did it, I couldn't quite get it. So that was, that should be good. So I want to open it up for um, questions. Do any of you guys have questions out there? Andrew has a question. Okay, Andrew, go ahead. What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite movie? Oh, what's my favorite movie? <laughs> I like the movie Jaws. I don't know if you guys know anything about it, <laughs> but it's about a giant shark. <laughs> but that's actually my favorite movie. Cool. What's your favorite movie, Andrew? What's your favorite movie, Andrew? The Croods. Come speak close so she can hear you. The Croods. The Croods. Oh, the I don't know, you know that one. It's about a stone, like a Stone Age family. Oh, okay. No, I do know what that is. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I haven't seen it though. It looks really cute. I'll have to watch it. That's a good one. How about anybody else? Um, I see Danielle room two. Um, those guys are 18 months old and okay. they were, they had to go to nap. So <laughs> she said, thank you that they enjoyed it very much. Um, and also Jen Sanshaw said, thank you. She had to go. Okay. Uh, um, we still have on some kids in room five and yeah, actually else? we have to get, we have to get going too because it's our outside time. So we have to start getting ready to go outside. Okay. So thank you. Thank you too. Hey friends, can we say thank you? Thank you. Welcome. Bye. Terry. Bye. Room, bye. bye. It, room five is the old room one. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's called room five now. Kathy um, Kaiser's in that classroom. Oh, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the that's the one that used to be known as room one. Yeah, okay. was it Roman in room five too at one time before he transitioned out? Yeah. yeah, but it was room one then. That was when I had it. He was in my first class with Crossroads, and he. Um, oh, that's right. It was your first class. Yeah, he was room. <laughs> that was when it was room one, and okay. then when we came to this building, it became room five. Everything okay. got re renamed and stuff. But yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, he was in that room. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. Well, this was fun. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for nice taking your time you, out of your day to be with us. It was really great um, to see you and <laughs> say, yeah, hi, say hi to I, Roman. I hope the book wasn't too detailed. <laughs> no, it was great. I think it's really, it was really great. I have not heard of that book before, but there was just so many levels in there of um, thinking about things like 
you know, the little thimbles, like they could, they could yeah. talk, but they couldn't write. <laughs> well, <laughs> could... actually my friend's father wrote it. He's 89 years old and he became oh. an author and, you know, he's written a couple other really? books. So when What's... I saw this one, I was like, oh, it's so adorable. I have to read that one. I love so, it. What's the, what is his um, name? It's Nick DeMauro. Nick DeMauro. I'm going to yeah. write it in the chat. Tell me if that is right. Because um, I did a quick search when you were reading to see if I could oh, okay. find it. Is that right. per is because I couldn't find it on Amazon, but I didn't look for long. Is that the way you spell it? Okay, Demoro, Nick Demoro. Gonna... It's almost like I have a um, nephew Demario, Nick Demario. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll have to make another visit out there soon. It's so good yeah. to see you. Oh, that would be nice to see him. It's always nice to see the kids who came, you know? Yeah. We, we don't see him that often, especially now during the COVID, you know? Yeah, that's true. But we always remember them, that's for sure. And the yeah. family. I remember think when Roman, he... Roman? Do you remember Roman Claus? Oh, well, this is, hold on. Annie's here. Oh, Annie. Annie. <laughs> Annie. Yeah. It's on my lunch break. Hi. <laughs> She oh, just read. Want, she one. just read the story. Yeah. I didn't click right away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good to see you. You look great. Are you still running? No. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Zumba and I walk. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. At least you're walking. Yeah. Doing something. I didn't realize yeah. that too. too. Yeah. Like it didn't click yeah. register right away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But it was awesome to see you and um. And like Janet said, if you can come and visit when, you know, when we're allowed to have visitors again, yeah. it would be great. That'd be nice. Yeah. And if Roman wants to volunteer, hopefully we'll be able to have volunteers again sometime soon. I know. Like, we're still at a standstill, but if he, yeah. you know, decides he wants to, um, just let me yeah, know. Yeah, he would love that. He, he was asking about that the other day and I said, well, we have to wait, you know, until yep. everything gets better with COVID, so. Yeah. As soon as we can, we're going to open, you know, as soon as our restrictions are lifted, which yeah. like, we keep getting closer. Like, I think a large percentage of the staff here is getting their vaccinations and, you know, we've just been going the full time. So yeah, it's just a matter of time before, you know. Yeah, I just got my first dose yesterday. So did you? I'm How do you feel? Do you feel, I feel like, fine? Yeah, 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 yeah. good. I'm, yeah. I don't go till the end of the month. Um, the 27th is my appointment. So I'm okay, looking forward good. to it. I'm yeah. good. <laughs> All right, Terry, we are we're so grateful. Well, remember she Thank you so much. And, uh, Thank you. We'll see you again. Okay. Oh, yeah. Have a great rest of your day. Take care. Said, Bye. Bye. It said, um, Terry, oh.